Download complete. Initiate playback. Playback. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> What's up, Time Gamers? Me, Time Gamer here, bringing you episode 24 of the Me, Time Gamer podcast. Me, Time Gamer here. How's it going today, guys? Hopefully, you guys are ready for another podcast episode 24. Already mentioned that. Good start, as always. Hopefully, everybody's going well. Another Friday, well, Thursday for me, but Friday for you, by the time you guys get the podcast or whatever day of the week, night, or evening you're listening to this. Uh, yeah, so uh, not much going on this week. Uh, what am I talking about here? <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go with the regular. Sorry, a bit weird. A uh, bit weird start. I didn't know how to start this one this time. But yeah, episode twenty four of the podcast. Uh, of course, uh, if you're new to the podcast, welcome to the podcast. We really appreciate you taking the time to taking a listen to the podcast. Hopefully, it uh, meets your expectation, except for that shitty start there we had there at the beginning. Uh, before I start, I'm going to get into where you can follow me before I do that. Uh, so you can follow the pod. If you're listening to the video version, you can uh, listen to the podcast version of Me Time Gamer Podcast over on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, and if uh, you're from Quebec, you can also wa- uh, listen to it on Balado Quebec. But if you're wi- if you're listening it to... Sorry about that. If you're listening to it on the, vi- the audio format, you can also l- l- see the video format of the podcast over at youtube.com forward slash me time gamer. I post usually in the video format. You can see videos related to the news topics, the kickstarting project and whatever game I played during the week. And what else? Uh, yeah. And also for a quick, uh, before I get even deeper into this, you can follow me everywhere. Me time gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and over on YouTube. So if you, it's the first time listening to the show, thank you once again for taking the time. Uh, the way usually the show works is I start off with what I've been playing for since the last podcast. Then I move into the news this week. I'm actually introducing a small little addition to the news with uh, quick fire news. Instead of going into the news, I'm going to actually uh, do a little uh, without. Um, I'll just throw some news out there without going into the too much details into it. And then after that, I I present to you a kickstarting it project. This is the kickstarting it uh, segment of the show, and then we finish off by the usual ending shenanigans of the podcast. So without further ado, let's get what I've been playing in the last week. So I've, I haven't not been playing a lot. Uh, I think the biggest thing I played in the last week has been the Destiny 2 open beta, which was quite excellent to play. I really enjoyed it. It did feel, personally, I did find it felt a lot like the Destiny, the original Destiny game. Of course, I when I stopped playing the original Destiny, uh, I stopped playing... Uh, before the first DLC came out for it, so my whole knowledge was the whole light level stuff uh, up to 30 and stuff like that by switching armors and things. So past that, I don't really have uh, much understanding what happened after the updates and DLCs and uh, expansion packs and stuff like that, so take take my word with a grain of salt, but I did feel like um, the general look of it, the general feel of it, uh, resembled a lot like the original Destiny. The only thing I found really different was how quick the game was. I did appreciate how the game w- was faster this time around. I don't know if it's the same for the, the Crucible and uh, for the raids and stuff because we don't have there was that wasn't available during the um, the open beta. The only thing, unfortunately, I didn't have a time to uh, to try to see the farm, which is sort of the replacement for the tower of Des- the original Destiny. So it was only available for a couple hours, if I remember correctly. It might it might have been longer than that. I don't know. I didn't have the time to go check it. And uh, besides that, I've been playing. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention last week is uh, once a week now, I'm trying to release a new video with my daughter, which I call Kids Play, which is a video I make with, with well, for now, my old my eldest daughter, and eventually when the other one's going to be old enough, hopefully she wants she will want to play games with me uh, and record them with me. And those videos have been doing actually pretty good. Uh, I don't want to be. I don't want to do too many of those videos because I don't want to. I don't want to derive my channel going into like a kids gaming channel. I still want to keep the fun and like the spontaneous swearing and stuff like that. That's the one thing I like about my channel. It's just it's for every age, but of course it's not like I don't want it to be directly linked to 
only doing kids gameplay and stuff like that so nothing against that it's just i really I, it's still fun to do the videos with my daughter really appreciate that it was really fun appreciate that i don't know that doesn't make sense in this case but it doesn't matter uh so we me and my daughter uh last week b before the last week's uh last week's uh, podcast we played a uh, super mario brother 3 from uh super mario all-star on the snes uh she enjoyed it a lot uh i i still i'm still terrible at it but that game was actually one of uh, my favorite mario mario of all of them so we had fun playing that we did play uh right after we did play uh donkey kong country but the video was really bad like the audio was out of sync and stuff i guess it's the emu emulator i was using which i i wasn't really using but the emulator was fucking up the audio and like for my microphone and all that so it was pretty sucky and uh to last to a couple days ago the video you saw this week with the kids play was uh bendy in the ink machine she's been seeing a lot of videos for that game so she wanted to try it out and we did and she really enjoyed it i actually scared her almost towards the end of the video you can actually me planning out to scare her in one of the parts where she's like oh what's that sound with that anyway go check out the video you're probably seeing a bit of it right now um so definitely go check it out over on youtube.com for slash me time gamer and besides that that's pretty much what i've been playing uh there's uh, a lot more uh, a lot other games are going to be coming out uh well i'm going to be playing this weekend next week i'm on vacation from work so hopefully i'll be able to play a lot more game record a lot more games for you guys to check out and yeah so without further ado that's going to be it for what i've been playing so we will be moving on to uh to the news all right so uh, not a busy week this week there like i said if you're new to the podcast, the way I cover news is I don't I don't go looking for like some of the shittiest news out there just to get some news. I try to find just the most important news that I feel is relevant to most people and uh, go from there. So the first article of news, which I did find was uh, sort of a more of a warning towards people that are interested in buying this. So the first thing is Walmart cancels uh, SNES classic pre-orders citing a glitch. So this is an article uh, from Kotaku by Chris Kohler. Uh, sorry if I said the last name, but I'm really bad at the last name. It's unbelievable. So the article goes as follows. So, uh, oops, if you breath a sigh of relief as you look locked down your SNES classic pre-order on Walmart.com Friday night, it's time to start hyperventilating again because the retailer has just canceled the orders uh, uh, mass. so in 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 all of them pre pretty much unfortunately now this is a quote unfortunately due to the technical glitch a super nintendo classic edition was mistakenly made available last friday evening ahead of its official release date reads an email that walmart just sent to those who pre-ordered the snes classic uh, we regretfully will have to cancel this item on your order we know that this is incredibly disappointing to you and we're truly sorry for this mistake uh, if you still end quote if you still have a Walmart pre-order that hasn't been cancelled, the word, the wording of this email indicates that your SNES class is no longer for the, is no longer for this world either. Um, then it goes into technical thing of, uh, if you guys didn't know, they're actually released around the SNES classic. They're also releasing an unreleased Star Fox 2. So that's a, one thing to look at. It is $80 US, so that's going to be like $90, $95, $100 Canadian. So that's, uh, that's pretty expensive. So... Basically, yeah, the article is everybody gets their fucking SNES Classic cancel period, which is a sucky thing. I don't know if it was really a glitch or not. It seems like pretty bad timing to have one of the most sought out console besides the Switch uh, accidentally being put on pre-order there and then getting canceled. Especially like everybody's trying to pre-order this. Like even me, well, I sort of abandoned that. I sort of decided I was going to do something else instead of... Because I'm personally, in my personal opinion, besides this is after after I saw after Nintendo cancel production of their the uh, other the NES Classic, I sort of like well they don't fucking care about people. They're just trying to make money and then they move on to the next project. So me, I decided to just go f like when I get a couple more bucks, I'll just go get a fucking Raspberry Pi and just fucking go from there because I find it so insulting that the company. I, I know they probably have a good reason behind it. It's just every time they, they do the same exact thing. It's uh, Well, we saw it this week, actually, uh, m a little bit more news uh, concerning this is fuck Nintendo. Uh, who was it? Nintendo canceled manufacturing of the SNES Classic. But then this week, they, I don't know if because uh, Think, Think Geek started uh, selling bundles so you can buy the NES Classic 
and then it came with like a statue or something or accessory for 140 or 200 dollars or something like that so they were selling other stuff with it i don't know if this was thing geek putting uh having stock of the of these things or nintendo released more of it to to them so they could sell it so it's a pretty sucky thing when you have so many individual trying to buy it for their own like i wanted to buy one and then as soon as they they said well okay we're stopping that and then can't find you, you already can't find it it's a high demand product and then they just stop making it right away you're like what the fuck's your business idea here guys you're you're you're, you're making money on this you're, you're you can't you can't really expect people to say oh well, they're, they're losing money i don't think with a with games that are more than 20 30 years old that you're actually going to be losing money on this the console i personally like my day-to-day -day job i work in manufacturing and i understand how mold mold productions work and stuff like that it, it making the quantity they make does not cost a lot per product at the end of the day if they make millions of these at a time so i know for a fact in, when they're when they're selling these 60 70 dollars uh, in North America, I know they're making uh, probably a good amount of money. And when you have millions of people, I know pr probably what happens too is they, they, they already had the set number that they wanted to do and then stop from there, which, okay, if you did that, that's your, that's your thing, but you're sort of leaving everybody else in the dark when you're not telling these things that right off the, like with the SNES, what they should be doing is coming straight out as like, Hey, we're making a million of these. When we're out, we're out. It's done. Cause now there's even rumors of a uh, uh, Nintendo 64 classic coming out next year. Cause there's, there's people are starting to see, uh, uh, copyright, uh, um, pattern copyrights or whatever for controllers. Uh, that resemble the the Nintendo 64. Anyway, we won't get into rumors. That's one thing I don't I don't like promoting here is rumors. So anyway, that's that's the thing about the NES. Cancels were uh, the orders were canceled from Walmart. So be weary if you're you're pre-ordering. That's one thing I noticed about these classic consoles or even the Switch itself. Nintendo usually with pre-orders are really very close to release date they'll start pre-orders and usually they're very limited quantities because like i've mentioned in multiple times before nintendo does this fucking tango where they 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 pretend like they don't manufacture a, a lot and then they they trickle out the amounts little by little by little just so they keep this fake hype going for the console and that's how it, it's working for them so of course they're going to keep doing it but that's how they, they they get you right and then if they wanted they could sell it almost a hundred dollars more and people pr find, probably still fucking buy it anyway but anyway, that's enough for the SNES Classic. Just be weary when you're pre-ordering. It sucks. People were probably really waiting for them. I heard a lot of people on Twitter they were like losing their shit because they lost their pre-order and stuff like that. So always be weary when you're dealing with Nintendo. Nintendo does this kind of well, fucking freaky shit that nobody wants, that they shouldn't be doing because they're pissing off everybody, but they do it anyway. So let's move on to the more uh, better news <laughs> for this week. Uh, the next article of news is oh, uh, games uh, games with goals have finally been announced for August 2017. So this is over at Major Nelson's blog. Uh, so the games for this month, let me check here. So the first two for uh, Xbox One is uh, from August 1st to August 30th, 31st is Slime Rancher, which is a pretty cool game. I saw a couple of playthroughs. I've never played it myself, but it is actually looks like a pretty cool game to try out. And then you have um, Trial Fusions. I think uh, what I'm, I, this is one game I've never played before, but uh, it's if I know it's a very popular game that a lot of people enjoy playing. Uh, and then after that, for Xbox 360, which are also playable on Xbox One with backward compatibility, it's a ba Bayonetta. Jesus Christ, Bayonetta. Bayonet, why the fuck do I have problems saying that word? Bayonetta. Ba French, get out of me. Get the French out of me. Uh, Bayonetta. And then Red Faction Armageddon. Which I've never actually seen Red Faction Armageddon. Bayonetta, I've seen some playthroughs of it way back when. Uh, so yeah, Trial Fusion is from August 16th to September 15th. So that's a weird trickery right there. Just be careful about that. And for the Xbox, for Bayonetta, Bayonetta, it's from August 1st to 15th. And Red Faction is from August 16th to 31st. And those are all free with your uh, monthly subscription or yearly subscription of games with gold or um, gold, whatever. And uh, that's pretty much it. Cool little games. Uh, but uh, then the next article in the news, the games for PS Plus are even cooler this month, I have to say. Even if I know I'm pretty sold on PlayStation more than Xbox there. But So, we yeah, the PS Plus free game lineup for August 2017 have, have also been announced. So, the full lineup goes as follows. 
I know the first one, a lot of people are going to be happy. I've already owned this game, but this is definitely a game you want to try. Just cost, just cost three on the PS4, which is definitely a game. If you like screwing around in open worlds with like, uh, with, well, you, if you, if you heard it, just cause, you know what it's all about. It's about fucking the grappling, the grappling hook and all that stuff and miniature, like the, his, um, what the fuck does he call those? Those miniature little uh, sticky grenades you can use in, in this edition. And this time you have multiple uh, hooks or something like that. I, I don't remember the name exactly. I haven't played that game in so long. So that's one of the fun games. That that one alone is worth the subscription for that month. But then after that, you have Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry. Now, this is a game, as soon as I saw that title, I was really... I really didn't know what the hell is <laughs> what the hell it was. Uh, it's actually a standalone game after... The, DL standalone DLC that was wait, the way to explain um, next uh, Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry Fre Freedom Cry a standalone adventure set after the events of Black Flag guide Ad Adewell on an emotional story using his skills as an assassin and his deep conviction of free oppressed people so definitely go check that out it's another Assassin's Creed game that I personally never heard of heard of uh, before I know when I looked it up on Google it, it usually comes out Assassin's Creed, Back Flag, Freedom Cry, something. So anyway, the other games for, for PS3 right now, it's going to be Super Motherload, which I don't know what it is, and Snakeball, which I think I heard about it, but I'm not 100% sure. And then after that, for the PS Vita, you have Downwell, which is also crossed by with PS4, which I've heard a lot of good thing about this game, so I might try it out on the channel when it comes out. It's basically... Um, a, uh, not a Tetris like it's these these games I don't play a lot but it's uh, basically you're 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 going down the, basically the game is you falling downwards and you have to evade stuff I don't remember but apparently it's a very good game uh, to try it and then the last game for PS Vita is level 22 uh, which I don't know what that is either uh, if you're watching the video format over on YouTube you will see the trailer I'll be po posting the uh, PS Plus uh, trailer that they have on the PlayStation blog there. So that's a very good selection game. Some would say it's one of the best. I I I could agree. It, the last couple of months have been pretty good because we two months ago we had Life is Strange and Killing Floor two, and then last month we had Until Dawn, which I still need to finish. Uh, hopefully, I'll be streaming that really soon. And uh, yeah, so this month just cost through, which is a fantastic game if you haven't tried it. And then Assassin's Creed's probably a fun game, and then for, go from there. So that's it for the main article of the news. Now we'll move on in a, a, just a, a subsection of news, which I'm going to call uh, I don't know. I was I was thinking about Quickfire, but I don't know if it's a lot other podcast called that. So we'll we'll just call it a Quickfire news. All right, we have three little Quickfire news, and I'm just going to read them off my little notepad that I have here. Uh, first one is Call of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare uh, Remastered is available now on Steam uh, from since July 27th. So definitely check it out, uh, Modern Warfare the Remastered, the one we uh, that I laughed about that they were never going to, that they were eventually going to, that they were saying they were never going to release separate from uh, Infinity Warfare, but they finally did this year. And then after that, you also have um, City Skyline out in August 15th for PS4. It's already out for uh, Xbox One and PC, which was last year, two years ago. But now it's uh, finally available for PS4. And then uh, one thing, the, the last one on the quick, uh, quick fire news is one I'm going to be trying out. Is Lawbre Lawbreakers Open Beta is, is available for pre-download right now. And the Open Beta starts at on July 28th, so tomorrow from when I'm recording or today when you're getting the podcast at 10, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that's it for quick starting. For quick... St that's it for quick fire news. Let's move on to kickstarting it. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. All right, guys. So if you don't know what kickstarting it, it basically I reach into the depth of Kickstarter and or Indiegogo or any sites like that. I find a project, a video game project for you guys to go to 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 support. I talk to you about it a bit, describe it if you're listening to the, the audio version or if you listen to video version, you're seeing a a video format of it, and then I. I, sh I give you guys the link so you guys can go check it out, support it, or whatever you want. So the project for this week's uh, kickstarting it is called Ep Epitasis. Sorry if I'm selling, saying that one wrong. It's E-P-I-T-A-S-I-S. -S. So uh, this is made by, uh, I don't know if it's a one-man team, but by Lucas Govados. 
Uh, is it made by only a one-man team? The game... Let me check. Sorry. I did check quickly, but I totally forgot. Uh, the team... Oh, no, there's a couple of people. There's a more, but I guess he, they didn't want to do a company type thing, or he created a... Anyway, it doesn't matter. So basically, this, this quick, the quick blurb at the top is Discover and explore beautiful alien worlds scattered with ancient technology and cryptic puzzles that echo of time long past. So basically the project is, uh, it's a, it's a brand new project that just started a couple days ago. It's, uh, it's already reached 3,000, almost $4,000 out of their, uh, $12,000 goal. They already have 179 backers and there's still 23 days to go on the project. So it's the project, it ends on, for the kickstarting it project ends August 20th. So definitely go check it out. Of course, if you want to check out the project before I keep going, uh, you can uh, check the, if you're watching the video format, there's a link in the description below. Or if you're watching, if you're listening to the audio format, there will be a, a link to the Kickstarter page in the show notes on metimegamer.com and find the podcast, episode 24 podcast post on the website there. Should be the first one on the top, usually, if you're listening to it when I'm releasing it. And uh, so the small little uh, description for the game goes as follow. Having stumbled upon an ancient portal, you take a leap of faith and suddenly find yourself amidst the remnants of an ancient alien civilization. Cryptic puzzles, for uh, forgotten technologies, and treasured relics are riddled among the beautiful wilderness that have engulfed the remains of this fallen race. If you are to learn their secrets, you must unearth the faith of the civilization they call those lost world home. Uh, and that's pretty much it. The game... Okay, Epi Epithesis is a colorful exploration puzzle game inspired by, an old and modern, by old and modern classics such as Myth and the Talus Principle, among others. It aims to provide a unique, a unique experience of discovery and puzzle solving. Uh, exploring at your own pace, traverse the colorful non-linear world in any way you choose, day or night. Learn to use alien machinery, provide power via lasers, disable security systems, and more. Every area beautifully handcrafted from large mountain swept vistas to the smallest of details. Discover ancient relics, jump through space bending portals, and unearth the faith of the race that ca that called these lost worlds home. And yeah, so to get the then after that it keeps going with the, the mechanics, exploration, and all that. To me, when I saw I saw this project on the front page of uh, new and new newsworthy and noteworthy, those are usually the ones I go for because uh, they're easier to promote, and usually they're better than if you go down way down the list and you some projects are not as good. But this one actually looks pretty good. If you look at the trailer, if you go on the YouTube version of the video, the YouTube version of the podcast, you'll see I'm playing the trailer, uh, the kickstartering it, the the Kickstarter. Uh, trailer that you guys are seeing right now uh, the game basically I, I found it had a, a good um, a no man's sky vibe not the bad vibe that everybody fucking talks about because I if you know me I, I actually enjoyed no man's sky when it came out uh, but it has that vibe like the exploration the sort of uh, atmosphere to the game uh, the the but it the game looks a bit more polished than no man's sky it's not as blocky as no man's sky but it does have that explorational feel to it but as the game described you saw it's a very puzzle based game so you have that different from from no man's sky uh so definitely definitely go check it out if you guys want to there's a lot more detail on the page about the game who made the game uh, some of the mechanics um the art style looks pretty good it's it's not your uh, it's not your triple a super uh super master looking thing there is a there's a, a gif showing like a portal transportation thing that looks pretty pretty cool and then um yeah so that's going to be it for kickstarting it All right, guys, that's going to be it for Me Time Gamer Podcast, episode 24. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. This is a fun and quick one. It's actually one of the shorter ones I've been doing in the in the uh, newer version of the podcast. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody listening to the podcast. I really appreciate take, you taking the 30 minutes. Uh, I know some, some of you might be used to more listening to uh, an hour, an hour and a half long video game podcast. But right now, but I'm alone, first off, so it's hard to go an hour talking about video games all the time. 
So I, I'm happy to make a more of a slimmed down version, so you guys have so my opinion on video games, what I what I'm interesting interested in, and go from there. I'd also like to thank Technoax for the intro and outro, and also uh, the intro and outro music. But also thanks to the artists providing the um, the the background music, which you can find them in the description below. Usually I choose that after the the, the show when I'm uh, editing. And uh, from there, also, if you want to follow me, you can do so everywhere. Me, Time Gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you're over on YouTube, of course, like the video and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. Show your support for the podcast and all the other videos I make. Subscribe to the channel, and I release a new video every day, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you, like, if you enjoyed the podcast, of course, go to your uh, podcast provider, iTunes, Twitter, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and all that. Give me a five-star five star review and give me a... Uh, leave a comment or whatever uh, or review I know there's a lot of things I can improve like taking my time to talk more uh, maybe some articles I can research a bit more I just I really want to do if before you do that the, the reason why I do the podcast like the way I do it is I want to do it more of a straight out the cu- straight off the cuff what I'm thinking instead of having researched it if I have wrong information of course you can always correct me and I really appreciate if you guys do that and I'll tell you a bit more about that later course you can if you want to help out the podcast and just uh, the, the the content i produce over on twitch over on youtube you can do so going to patreon.com for slash me time gamer uh, there's only one one tier at three dollars is just to show your general support uh, there's not much I, i'm offering right now except like uh, future ideas that i might pass through you guys if you if you think it's a good idea or uh, of course you guys would be shot out in the, the, the um, in the podcast and the videos and uh, that's pretty much it. It's only three dollars. So it's not much. It's uh, three dollars, and you get four podcasts in a month. So you get twenty videos in a month, even sometimes even more. That's what you're supporting, and you get uh, you, you get hopefully eventually I'll be able to stream more regularly, which is something I hate myself. I'm not doing more. Uh, and of course, if you want to contact the podcast, you can do so towards where with the social media. Sorry. You can do so with the social media that I talked about a bit a, couple, a minute ago, but you, you can also do so via email at podcast at metimegamer.com, or if you want to sponsor the podcast, you can do so at contact at metimegamer.com. And that's going to be it. Really appreciate you guys stopping by and listening or watching the podcast, of course. It always feels good when I see interaction with the podcast. Just a just a thumbs up on the pet podcast does a whole lot, a whole lot of motivation. But of course, I do this because I have fun recording and talking to you guys while I'm recording. Hey, even me, I listen to my own podcast the next day at work when I when I'm done recording. So I I enjoy listening to make sure that's how I keep improving myself. But of course, with you guys uh, leaving a comment, of course, it's, that's going to be it. So thank you so much, guys, for watching or listening. Really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video so or podcast. So keep on keeping on.